um, to the English training session. Um, welcome. So, um, this session is um, about um, language tools that we can use um, um, uh, to aid um, students and as teachers, better tools for um, teaching. So um, uh, the last session um, that we had brought with you with another group, <coughs> we did various tools like word wall, go send, um, and other tools. But um, the demand from the teachers was largely um, that um, we need tools for the classroom which are free. And most of these um, apps and websites you see are um, mostly paid. The basic features of them are available, but um, largely the premium features are not available. So I decided to make a um, shift um, in, in the approach and look at different kinds of um, tools that are really useful and are free and um, need not be used um, directly in a classroom setting, but these are tools and aids um, for teachers to um, help students. Um, they can be used in the classroom as well if you have smart boards or use them as preparatory materials. And um, I'd uh, focus on all the different um, um, skills, which is um, listening, speaking, um, writing, and reading. And um, I also like to begin with a disclaimer always that uh, no technology is the best technology. The lesser we use um, technology, <clears throat> the better it is. It's, there's nothing like experiential learning. And um, um, given how we are gravitating towards um, uh, technology and how we are hooked on to our um, mobile devices, um, uh, we're losing track of the real skills, which is handwriting, listening, reading books, and which are all very primary skills. So and this comes with a disclaimer that we should encourage students to read books and good literary books as far as possible. Um, rather than hunting for tools here and there. Of course, there are tools. And there's endless number of tools these days um, online on any subject um, that you choose, um, whether it's um, listening skills or speaking skills or learning grammar and so on. So forth. you'll find lots of tutorial videos, you'll find lots of apps to use. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I'll go step by step into, um, into the various skills um, that are needed and the primary sort of um, uh, tools um, that we need. So, and I'll also, also share my screen with you. Can you see my um, screen? Okay, good. <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, one of the first most important things about um, learning vocabulary or um, learning words is, um, um, is how words are used, um, <clears throat> in what combinations are used. And this is called collocation. So there is this website called osdic.com, which helps you with um, how different words are used and what combinations they use 
what phases they combine into. Um, and so the usage, right, one may have a good uh, vocabulary, but unless you know the collocation of it, unless you know how to use it um, properly, it's no use. And so OSDIC is a very good website to um, give an idea of um, how to use. So for example, and so this is called co-location or collocation of how words are used in combination. So for example, uh, let us um, take a word like activity, since we are doing an activity right now. As you can see, it, um, <clears throat> it returns um, first the meaning of it, the dictionary meaning of it, frantic, phonetic, heightened, increased, intense, so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> um, as adjectives, what adjectives can be used with this now? Frantic activity, phonetic activity, heightened activity, and a different senses. Criminal activity, extracurricular activity, business activity, mental activity. You see there are different, uh, it's sorted it out into different categories and um, <clears throat> placed in different categories, how different adjectives can be used with this word activity. And there are examples given over. Um, how to use the verb with activity. Here's an activity you can do. We suspect um, uh, so the verbs that can be used with this noun be involved in, engage in, participate in. And so <clears throat> it gives you a range of the usage of the word in different kinds of phrases, um, <clears throat> phrasal verbs, and what the kind of phrases that are also created with this um, uh, noun. So a hive of activity, so they, the last two examples, as you can see, um, a very busy place, a sign of activity. So phrases are, of course, metaphors. They're not literal meanings. And so it's very good to learn phrases of particular words. So if you uh, write in the um, chat box, you are keep responding or any words that you would like to incorporate or see, we can uh, for example, let's take um, any other um, now education. So these are the adjectives that go with education, decent, excellent, first class, good, poor, compulsory, formal, in different categories again. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> um, you see the examples, poor education that he had received. So this gives you a very good sense of what verbs not to use. For example, we would tend to use in India a verb like got, he got, poor education that he got. And so now you know that received is the right, right word to um, uh, use in terms of begetting education. The school provides an excellent all-round education, etc., etc. So it's giving examples with all the different um, adjectives that it has cited. Um, then how education, the word, the noun can be used with <coughs> another noun where education can become an adjective, education campaign, for example, education courses, <coughs> um, how to use them through prepositions, and so on and so forth. So <coughs> um, let's take um, some sort of a fun word, <clears throat> complicit, complicity, let's say, <clears throat> or alleged complicity in bombing. So of course, it's a complex word. So um, <clears throat> uh, the only two adjectives that I use, complicity is when um, your involvement is um, suspected in an activity. And so how this can be used as an adjective with prepositions, the complicity between the army and the drug smugglers, her complicity in a plot to kill the president is very bizarre, macabre examples they've given, but she did not sus suspect him of complicity with the authorities, um, so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> so note these down. This is a very good um, resource to see word usage. Um, it's called osdic.com. And this um, sort of activity is called collocation, in which you locate the word according to its neighboring words, according to its phrases, the subject verb agreement, the right ways to use a word. Okay? And this you can tell students as well in terms of practicing the words that you tell them. All right. 
now uh, these days there are lots of um, uh, spell check of course microsoft word has an inbuilt um, uh, spell checker in it but there are lots of third party um, spell checkers grammar checkers like there's grammarly but grammarly is a paid website um, whereas quillbot please make a note of this quillbot is um, a website which is largely free it says upgrade to premium but you don't need to upgrade to premium um, you get lots of good tools um, in it um, as long as your text is small if you give it a 20 page text it's a problem as long as you give it paragraphs um, two paragraphs with 300 words and all that it's absolutely um, fine so we have got a paraphraser grammar checker plagiarism checker co-writer summarizer citation generator um translator so let us see grammar checker for example let's write a wrong sentence <clears throat> he was goes to let's put a bad spelling on this one okay. and there it offers you the suggestions that the spelling of school is wrong and so we correct it. There's a tab called fix errors at the bottom. He goes to school. This is a very good tool to um, correct uh, grammar. There's also a um, summarizer. So we'll paste something from somewhere and see. <clears throat> Example, I just pasted a random text, a letter that I was just writing. Okay, and I just summarize it. Right, summarizes very well 100 words to about, um, um, <clears throat> and you can set the length of this summary also, make it longer, shorter. This we made it short, so it's given us a short summary of it. So um, these, of course, these are not, uh, this is a, a cheat website where um, this is not good in terms of um, uh, learning because uh, this can be used to make the machine work for you. But, but still, it's a good tool um, for teachers to learn. There's also a citation um, uh, generator. So you can put the name of the book uh, here and it will cite it uh, in MLS style or whatever. That's not really needed at the school level. There's also a plagiarism checker, paraphraser. There's also a translator. <clears throat> translator, of course, is a very good tool. And uh, there's Google Translate also. There's other translate translation tools like Anuvadini also. So all in all, Pillboard is a very good um, um, site for um, uh, checking your grammar once you have written your essay and also for teachers to check plagiarism. It will use online resources and this is of course um, uh, the lim limited part of it will be free. Um, <clears throat> okay, this is I guess the plagiarism checker is not available for free. The summarizer, grammar checker, paraphraser, these are there for free. <clears throat> So these are very good tools for grammar and paraphrasing as we saw. Now coming to um, um, speaking skills. Uh, we need a lot of uh, um, speech activities in the classroom. Um, discussions, group discussions, debates, which of course schools do, elocutions, extempore, and so on and so forth. But in terms of online tools, there is something called ESLdiscussions.com, <clears throat> which generates um, topics and questions related to it for a conversation. So ESL discussions. 
as you can see, there's a range of topics given over here, abbreviations, acronyms, age, and it's all uh, alphabetically sorted with B, breakfast, Brazil, and so on and so forth. Right? And it will go on this way. Um, C, D. So, for example, let us take up anything, something since we're talking digital, let's take digital revolution. Right. So this is for a conversation between two students, <clears throat> student A and student B. It generates um, 10 questions each on every topic for both the students. And as you can see, the questions are very good and can lead to a very good um, conversation. What is digital revolution? What is so revolutionary about it? How does the digital revolution compare with the industrial revolution? So there's a dash of um, the student needs to have um, some sort of a historical knowledge of what the industrial revolution was. Are we at the beginning, in the middle, or end of digital revolution? This is a very good topic for uh, um, debate. Um, <clears throat> has the digital revolution been good or bad for the world? How has the digital revolution changed your life? So the questions, as we can see, are very comprehensive, debate-worthy, food for thought for the students, and teachers can help students um, uh, in terms of navigating this discussion. And these are very good exercises for um, um, speaking. Right, that's a very good resource for speaking skills. Now coming to listening skills, um, I think um, in terms of what if you can see the my screen, right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in terms of listening skills, uh, the best resources are um, podcasts. And um, uh, let's look at some uh, of the interesting podcasts, some very good podcasts, which can be recommended to students, which I use for teachers also, and which like the ESL um, website also covers a range of topics. So we saw one um, um, topic on ESL. Let's see a couple more to see the range of discussions that can be generated in the classroom with this, for example, the word discussion itself. What springs to your mind when you hear the word discussion? What's a healthy discussion? Do you like taking part in discussions in English? Do you ever get involved in pointless discussions? All very good questions. Student B's questions also, let's see. Are you good at discussing things? What are the differences between discussions, debates, and conversations? It's a very good language question, as, as well as a question of um, you know, uh, meaning of words of etym etymologies as well. When was the last time you had a heated or animated discussion? Do you look at discussions on TV between a panel of experts? So we see there's a range of questions that cover all the points related to these topics, which are political in nature, personal in nature, social in nature. There's a whole uh, gamut that is covered on ESL. So it's a very good resource. Um, and these can be you know, downloaded Yeah, so on the um, um, left-hand side top, you can see a PDF word and help my website. So you can download these, print these out, take it to the class, distribute um, um, handouts to students as the discussion has to proceed. All right. Then <clears throat> coming to the matter of podcasts. Podcasts are very important for um, listening skills. What are the, some of the best podcasts um, as of day? The podcasts, there are a dime a dozen all over the place. There's um, there are Audible, there are an Apple podcast, but all these are paid. Um, there's Amazon. Uh, the, the best ones are um, uh, fortunately the free ones. So <clears throat> there is the BBC Six Minute Podcast. It's very good. It doesn't take time as well. So you just need to Google <clears throat> BBC Learning English, six minute English. <clears throat> and so all these very useful resources on bbc.co.uk uh, as well. 
um, so uh, these are six minute uh, roughly six minutes podcasts um, and which so given the attention span of um, students and learners these days uh, six minutes is a good time slot to have and as you can see they cover a very good range of topics how green is your money saving dead languages mushrooms medicine or myth making male friends how fans talk about their passions space saving solar hacks are you unhappy at work heat waves the stories behind our names very good topics for example let's look at saving dead languages as you can see <clears throat> there's a download pdf and download audio as well so you can get the uh, entire sort of this is not a word for word transcript but it gives you the entire sense of what happened and these also you can print out while listening to it in the classroom or these can be given as tasks the entire audio can also be downloaded and saved to your computer anyway and um, as you can see there is uh, introduction there's the week's question there's also the vocabulary so uh, it's got a comprehensive range. So let's look at this. Before the European settlers, Australia was home to more than 200 languages. Many of these have died out since, but somehow, some have now been brought back to life. Bangala is one of those. Neil and Phil discuss the revival of Bangala and teach you some useful vocabulary. <clears throat> so as you can see that it's very important to delve into interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary learning like this. By um, uh, this is the right approach to uh, let's say teach a language or teach grammar. By uh, this, of course, improves the listening skill because um, um, <clears throat> these are very good podcasts and also tune students' ears to different kinds of accents. So this is, of course, from Britain. So there's British accent. There's Others like Voice of America, where you can listen to the American accent, the Indian podcasts, and so on and so forth. So that's one way to tune. And the Indian ear, of course, is tuned, highly tuned to various kinds of um, accents. We are the only one who can figure out lots of accents. When I was in America, they had difficulties understanding a lot of um, things, Indian accent, because they're not tuned. But we have the advantage. And with these podcasts, we can train our ears to uh, listen even better. Anyway, the point was that multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary learning is very important. And that's the way to memorize. That's the way we remember things. When there's something <coughs> very interesting, thought provoking. So something like dead languages. What is a dead language? And while talking about technology, language is probably the oldest technology that we have. Um, to differentiate us from um, other animals. We developed a whole um, scene of a whole um, sea of ocean of symbols to communicate with and um, <clears throat> uh, made things much easier through, through these signs. Uh, we are communicating right now through signs, right? So <clears throat> um, where does this take us to? It takes us to the history of Australia. Um, and so in India, students or even teachers barely know about the history of Australia. We merely know about uh, uh, cricketing ties between India and Australia. Uh, what we know about kangaroos. Little do we know that Australia was colonized in 1788 by the British people, which is not very far. It is um, <clears throat> just 200 years ago. And before that, they had lived on that island for 40,000 long years. We talk of Indus Valley civilization and Babylon and Egyptian civilization. Um, what's the length? 3,000 years, 5,000 years at the max. And we are so proud of the Indus Valley civilization. Has anyone thought that the Australians lived on that island for 40,000 years without being touched by anybody in the world? And which is why they have amazing flora and fauna and which is why they have the kangaroos and wombats and all these strange animals and trees. And um, all of this has been destroyed nearly in 200 years. The kind of damage that civilization has afflicted on um, primeval, primitive civilizations uh, is 
something that you can learn from podcasts like this. This is a great uh, lesson in history, how history is written, how history is taught, and about languages. 200 languages dead in 200 years. Isn't it amazing? Anyway, so um, um, there are all these um, vocabulary exercises at the end of it. A missionary, <clears throat> what is a missionary? Um, this is also, we hear this word very often. And so these are also points of debate uh, in a classroom of what is a mission? What is a missionary? Who's a heathen? Where did this word come from? Um, phrases like topsy turvy, right the wrongs of the past, um, and so on and so forth. So it's a very good podcast to um, subscribe to. It's completely free. Then there is a Voice of America. <clears throat> Also, very good podcast. And as you can see, it's got a range of um, topics. It's got everyday grammar, it's got Ask a Teacher, American Stories, Arts and, arts and Culture, as it is, <clears throat> um, all kinds of things. It's got American History, of course. It's an American podcast, words in their stories. So um, it's got a lot of things about grammar, about contemporary affairs, about art and culture, about history, English in a minute, um, how to pronounce things, and um, um, so on and so forth. So um, it's a very good resource. So for example, let us take um, every grammar. Okay. Here, and grammar is not merely grammar as we teach it, but as you, as you can see, it is um, it has got a theme. It's got uh, the theme of um, currency, what is being talked about in current affairs, in literature, in society. So, for example, discussing artificial intelligence. It's a five minute, again, a six minute uh, sort of um, podcast. So I'm not playing the podcast, of course, you can hear them later. But um, you can see that there's a short summary here also. And they're open-ended uh, uh, questions. Let's start with questions. Questions generally come in two forms, yes or no questions and open-ended questions. Yes or no questions ask for a yes or no answer. Um, and so on and so forth. So they have also explained what the nature of questions is. And um, uh, so they're very good questions, as you can see. What do you think of artificial intelligence? Why are people concerned about artificial intelligence? How will artificial intelligence affect our lives? So it's um, a very good tool in terms of uh, uh, ad addressing uh, contemporary issues while learning grammar. So that's the second podcast I recommend after the BBC Six Minute is Voice of America. <clears throat> there are a few other interesting uh, podcasts, a couple more. <clears throat> Let's look at them and then we'll move on to um, uh, another topic. So if six minutes is too much, as both of these are, the BBC Six Minute and the Voice of America, also six minutes, there is a listen a minute. .com. This, like the ESL discussion forum, lists um, um, exhaustively lots of talking points in the uh, classroom. And as you can see, that uh, there is a lot of Contemporary things also included, which are generally not included in our classrooms, but which you hear of in the society. For example, in A, you can see anti-aging um, uh, creams. There's a thing about bullying, things which are generally not talked about in the Indian schools, bad habits. And so they try to cover as many topics as a school student of different levels needs to um, be um, aware of needs to be introduced. For example, let's look at bullying. And these are one minute podcasts. I'm not playing the podcast, obviously, or maybe it's one minute so we can play it. I don't know if you can hear it or not. But uh, so this is listenaminute.com. We are seeing. Okay. 
can you can you hear the podcast all right so you can listen to it um, yourself somebody said i'm not uh, very audible so i've changed the position of my mic hopefully it will help so <clears throat> these are very good uh, one minute podcasts that introduce you to the concepts and raise debating points for the classroom as a, and as you can see there's a pdf link there's a word link and there's quizzes also so this is related to uh, bullying um and this is uh, uh, this also gives you a score um, uh, and so these these are comprehension these are really listening skills so you listen to it for one minute then you ask the question so we didn't listen to it but let's randomly say my answer was wrong bullies took away my belief but anyway so these are very good topics um sorted out alphabetically very good for classroom discussion um as you can see there's things about family famine first impressions heaven heart attack heroes all kinds of things that students would be interested in and um, this is very good for the listening skill very good for comprehension there's two follow up quizzes with every um, topic and these can also lead to um, um classroom discussions okay so that was we saw bbc4 we saw voice of america listen a minute and then we must also look at a couple of um, literature podcasts because um, uh, there's no better way to inculcate uh, students interest in language than through literature so there is and also it piques their curiosity about um, knowledge about the world so there is something called the bookworm of kcrw <clears throat> So kcrw.com, which has bookworm, which has book reviews and author interviews, um, <clears throat> as you can see. This, um, so this is for slightly higher level for uh, higher classes. Let's say class class nine onwards, as you can see, uh, the topics that are there: the story of America, <clears throat> poetry, grief and loss, the controversy of bookworms, things like that. And these are long. um these are about 30 minutes to 40 minutes so um, for example let's look at nobel laureates and this would be a, a topic of great interest to um, students uh, it um, <clears throat> gives you an introduction to who the nobel laureates are in literature um <clears throat> we'll be hearing from four of them tony tony morrison in this part wole soenka or han pamu and shima sini um <clears throat> and so apart from these as you can see there are lots of um, other contemporary topics that are also listed over here aliens likely exist feds are keeping secrets tom morello brings back his school of rock etc etc largely <clears throat> american but there are lots of topics of um, general interest and there are lots of interviews with authors which would interest students um <clears throat> to write and to read good books then there is um another one from bbc called the radio 4 google radio 4 podcasts it's also on youtube um as you can see it's also sorted out very well in our time culture in our time history religion science philosophy So let's click on something like what is the question only? Um, right, this is also BBC. Uh, the BBC had the six-minute podcast, and this also has something called Radio Four, which is also for also for the slightly higher classes, um, class nine onwards. Where you can see there's a range of topics like. Virgin Room of One's Own, which is Virginia Woolf, um, and if you do not know, Virginia Woolf's Room of One's Own is one of the seminal feminist books of the twentieth 
century where she talks about how women have been excluded from the workspace and how it's important to have one's own space um, to be a writer and so on and so forth. It's, it's a brilliant book. So there are all these very interesting topics for students by the best in the world, um, by the best writers have been interviewed and all the best critics have spoken about these matters. A um, couple more podcasts because these podcasts are very interesting. There's the Times Literary Supplement Voice. <clears throat> this started as a poetry podcast. Something else is written. Sorry. <clears throat> right. The TLS podcast. As you can see, these are also long. These are roughly between 45 minutes to an hour and have a range of uh, topics like returning back to the school and so on and so forth. Also, TA Times Literary Supplement is one of the best uh, literary journals in the world. And so um, <clears throat> this is um, a very varied sort of literary uh, podcast, which, uh, which has poetry and much more. And finally, I'll tell you just one more podcast before we move on to another form of listening and speaking skill. The English We Speak. This is also BBC. So we got three tools from BBC today. And the transcript of it is also given over here. And these are all uh, topics which are motivational, which are uh, you know, pertain to the classroom, pertain to English language, and um, so on and so forth. And these are even hands down. These are also phrases. You can download the PDF, download the audio, as with um, the other two, Radio 4 and the 6 Minutes. And this is specifically for language, as you can see from the transcript, that <clears throat> the phrase will be repeated several times, and repetition is one of the best ways to learn. So in a, through a conversation, this phrase will be repeated several times and um, that you would learn the phrase at the end of it. So these can be used in the classroom for students to practice. Uh, you can listen to the podcast and give the character to two students so who will read it out in the class. And eventually this way, you can do it every class so that eventually at the end of the month, you'll probably have 30 phrases that, new phrases that students would have learned. So that's a roundup of all the podcasts. Once again, there were three BBC podcasts, the BBC Six Minute, the BBC um, Radio 4, and English We Speak. There's Times Literary Supplement Voice um, for literature. Mm, there's Times Literary Supplement Voice and KCRW Bookworm. And the One Minute Podcasts, as I also told, are very good. They listen a minute, which are very good in terms of um, generating discussions in classroom, as well as for comprehension, listening comprehension. You listen to it, and then you ask online questions. There are two quizzes given with each of the um, topics. Something <clears throat> that many of us do not know is that Google this these days itself is very powerful with everything. You don't need to look too many third-party private tools. There's a lot that Google itself can do. So um, <clears throat> you go to Google, you go to definition. You can go do it in the tab as well. I'm doing it <clears throat> to make it more uh, uh, sort of systematic. So <clears throat> when you do Google definition, what comes up is what word do you want to look up? At the beginning. Right? So this is this is for speaking skills since we're talking about listening and speaking skills. So let us do definition itself. The definition of a definition. Okay. All right. So of course the word meaning comes up, a statement of the exact meaning of a word, especially in a dictionary. Dictionary definition of a verb, the degree of distinctness and outline of an object, etc. etc. So <clears throat> but you see 
And the tab over here is a speaking tab, which many of you know. If when you press on it, it gives you the pronunciation. Uh, you can see there's different languages that will come up as well, English and Hindi, Indian, English and Marathi, English and Tamil. And um, you can see that AI is very sharp. Um, it also takes data from you, who you are interacting with, and which is why we see that Tamil has dropped up over here right now. Earlier it was another language. Then there's a tab called Learn to Pronounce. Right? And it breaks it up into phonemes, definition, and practice. So let me try speaking it wrong. To Phoenician. So yeah, it was too wrong. Let me make it slightly wrong. To finish it. See, so it corrects you. It says you have to say day instead of do. So the minor errors that we have in our pronunciation will correct it. And as you can see that it also has um, the lip movements involved over here. We can slow it down also and play. Okay, so let me say the right way now. Practice definition. Hmm. Still finds a problem. Definition. The problem with my mind. Today. Definition. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> so this is the way you can practice it. Um, and there's, you can see that various kinds of things. There are usage examples. The pronunciation we saw is similar in opposite words. So um, Google does a lot of job these days by itself. You don't need to do a specific, but for pronunciation, uh, <clears throat> this is very good. Let's try some other word. Accent, for example. It gives you the etymology also, where this word is coming from. And this, we don't have much time for it. This is something that I especially want to talk about, etymologies of words and um, as also um, <clears throat> Playing around with etymologies. Etymology is a word root, where a word is coming from. And this is something that is not taught in schools, not taught in colleges, and which is why we struggle with vocabulary. Once you have a sense of where the word is coming from, what Greek and Latin roots it has, or what foreign language roots it has, it becomes very easy to keep to guess a word. We can do a whole uh, separate training session on that. But for example, accent over here, as you can see, is from Latin ad caner. There's a website dedicated to, and there's an app also of this called itemonline.com, which gives you etymologies of words and which has very good articles who lust for certainly lust for lies. Um, <clears throat> Basically, you can type in any word and it will give you the root of it. So, for example, let me tell you an interesting word called juggernaut. We should do that. All these classes have to be interactive. It's no fun speaking from one side. So, juggernaut is a word which is actually from uh, Hindi, actually Odia, uh, which goes back to Sanskrit. Um, Lord Jagannath, who is in Puri. The British could not pronounce Jagannath, so they said Jagannath. So the Rathayatra, uh, anything that is difficult to move, 
because one lakh people pull it. Uh, I don't know how many people pull it, more than a lakh, probably 10 lakhs. Um, and also impossible to stop once it's rolling by the force of inertia. The British couldn't pronounce it, so it became juggernaut. So now it's an English word which means something that is unstoppable or something that is heavy to move. All right, which you can see all of that. You can see the second paragraph. This is from the Sanskrit Jagat, the world, men and beasts, Natha, Lord. And so you can see how, where the words are from. And this opens up a whole new world of learning with stories of words. Um, it's much easier to learn words if you know their backstories, these kind of interesting stories, if you know. For example, um, something like stationary and stationary. Station, A-R-Y, station, E-R-Y. This is something which bowls over anyone. Even good teachers do not know what the difference is what, or what the spelling of which one is. If you knew the story of it, um, it would be easy. Or if you know how words are formed. So the, the suffix A-R-Y denotes a condition, customary. Hmm? <clears throat> Let me just use this etymological dictionary as a dictionary also for now. Customary, A-R-Y, right? something that is part of the custom. Ordinary, A-R-Y, something that is ordinary, <clears throat> as you can see, something, the order of which is, um, is we are talking about. So A-R-Y, the suffix connotes the state of existence, whereas E-R is somebody who is involved in a business, hawker, <clears throat> vendor, you know, vendor is OR, costermonger, whatever. You know. <clears throat> you know the words ending with ER, which means somebody who is involved in the business of that. And so stationary is something which is involved with being at a station, <clears throat> something which is standing at a place. Where stationary is your pen, pencil, etc. Why is that? The root word is the same, station. So station or somebody who sells at the station is a stationer. Somebody who sells things at a railway station is a stationer. And so what he sells again becomes a noun, becomes stationer. So let us see here. <clears throat> Am I right or wrong? Let's see. Writing paper from stationer, seller of books and paper. The spelling dis di uh, distinction from stationary is purely etymological to convenient in print. Stationary, so <clears throat> as you can see, stationer is somebody who sells at a station. Book dealer, seller of books. So what I'm trying to say here is that um, <clears throat> this is not a path that is told to any school teacher, an English teacher, to go down the etymological line. But if you go through this, you will discover lots and lots of interesting stories of word formation. Once you know the story, you're never going to forget the spelling or the usage. For example, after today, none of you will forget the difference between stationary with an ARY and an ERY. Um, <clears throat> All right, there is a um, lot we can um, uh, go on, but um, I think I'll end over here. But I'll give you one more very interesting tool. Um, of course, all of us and children are interested in movies. And uh, movies are a great resource. Good movies are a great resource for learning uh, good English. But there is this tool, this website called yarn.co. Any phrase that you have heard, <clears throat> will pop up. In which movies has this phrase been um, used? For example, let's say, busy as a bee. Has it appeared in any movie? There you go. There's so many movies in which um, this has appeared. This is really exciting for everyone to um, figure out for example, I was in this very strange city called Barstow in California a few years ago, and I thought, I have seen this in a movie. 
Um, then I discovered this tool. I figured out that I had seen it in Kill Bill Volume 2, where a woman is buried in the past. So you can just type a phrase and it shows up all the movies that, um, of course, these, these would be specific largely to um, Hollywood films, but it's a very well built resource of um, um, through um, words and key phrases, point out at movies that's been used. This can be a very good, a fun quiz and also a method to teach um, phrases um, in the classroom. All right, so um, I'll end over here and if there are any questions. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. 